Hello students, welcome to lecture 23 of the online course on photonic crystals, fundamentals and applications. Today's lecture we will be discussing about different types of defects in the photonic crystal slabs. So here is the lecture outline, we will be discussing linear defects in slabs in details and then we will just touch upon uh, point defects in this lecture and in the next lecture we will have more discussion about point defects. So, we have briefly discussed already we know how point defects look like okay, in a photonic crystal and with that you can create waveguides and other kind of devices. Today we will go into more details of it. Okay. So, I hope you remember from the previous lecture where we saw in the video tutorial that you know when you create a line defect that can change the band diagram. Right. So, it basically introduces a guided mode in the band and uh, f all the frequencies in the guided mode can uh, propagate along the defect thereby creating a waveguide. Okay? So, however, the localization of waveguide modes relies on both the band gap within the plane of the periodicity and also on index guiding in the vertical dimension and this will restrict the kind of modes that you know we can guide through this kind of waveguide. So, in our discussion of two and three dimensional crystals, we have formed a waveguide by removing a you know a row of rods as we have seen in the previous lecture and in this case right uh, in this particular slide, we will show you that you know we will remove the row gradually okay, and uh, that is by shrinking the radius of the rods okay, and we will show you how the defect mode basically forms. So, look here on the slide on the first figure that is figure 1, it gives you the views of reduced radius waveguide uh, fabricated in a rod slab. So, you can see the you know this one this particular waveguide is formed by uh, having rods of reduced radius and these are the material. Okay, and you can see they are also having bit of tapered shape for all of the uh, nano rods. Okay, they are not proper cylinders. So, the structure was basically uh, designed to couple the reduce uh, radius waveguide via um, a adiabatic taper to dielectric strip waveguides at the ends. So, both ends you can see there is uh, dielectric strip waveguides and uh, there is adiabatic taper that actually helps you couple this waveguide to those dielectric strips. And now, this is the fabricated sample and the uh, bar here, the white bar shows the dimension that is 2 micron for this much length of the sample. Now, look at figure 2. Uh, figure 2 basically is showing the projected band diagram of uh, TM like that is uh, Z odd states in a linear waveguide in the rod slab of the figure that is uh, shown here you can see and that is formed by reducing the radius of the uh, row at the center. So, the inset shows you that this particular row has a lower or smaller radius than the other rods and here also you can see the plot. Okay? So, this is a band diagram. So, you actually have uh, frequency and wave factor and it is for the finite height or thickness. So, you have got this you know light cone at a slope of 1. Okay? So, it is 0 0.5 here 0 0.5 you can see uh, this is actually this, this uh, line tells you the boundary of the light cone okay? and uh, the blue uh, dark blue shaded region which are uh, below the light line shows you the extended modes which are supported by the crystal and the rods in the bulk crystal they have radius of 0 0.2 a and what we have done here we have seen that when so usually this is the band gap okay so between these two dark blue regions you will have band gap if the entire crystal is made of 0.2 a radius rods but now if you introduce a defect by changing the center row to different different uh, row radius 
okay so you will see that localized web web guide bands will be introduced within the gap so they will, will actually allow propagation okay for certain frequencies so that is how you can see that when um, the rod radius is usually r equals 0.2 a from that you slightly reduce you you can get a mode over here you further reduce you get here you further reduce you get here and so on so slowly what will happen you will get the modes over here right so those are the extended modes in air fine so this is what is shown so the radius of all the rods in a particular row is shrunk and uh, this is the band diagram for different different uh, shrunken radii sizes so let us look into the mode localization and the band gap in further details so as i mentioned the extended modes of the crystals are basically highlighted in this dark blue region and the band gap is shown in this light blue region where you can see this kind of single guided band for each of those reduced radius that we can choose so either you choose r equals 0.1 a or r equals 0.12 a you will get one single guided band okay so these uh, modes are actually showing tm like uh, profile so you can actually see that from the uh, field distribution so this is the field distribution so you can see look into this graph from the top or the side view okay and uh, here we have considered the defect rod radius to be 0.14a that is we are basically talking about this one okay and we consider the wave vector of 0.42 that is we are basically at this particular point where the cursor is currently placed so at this point this is what is the field distribution looking like now the localized mode that you see cannot couple to the extended modes within the crystal due to its placement within the band gap right so it also cannot couple to the extended modes in air this one okay because the frequency is below the light line so it cannot actually couple to other modes or the air modes and cannot leak out so despite the band gap being incomplete okay the waveguide mode will exist and it is supported by the conservation of kx that is the wave vector along the propagation direction so here you can see x is the direction of propagation okay and this waveguide mode will propagate in this waveguide mode will propagate indefinitely in a perfectly periodic system so what does this presence of light cone tell you so the band diagram in of this photonic crystal slab okay will have this light cone right so this is not present in a perfectly two dimensional photonic crystal right so when there is this finite height or thickness of the photonic crystal slab you will have this light cone and this adds a significant constraint on the behavior and the existence of the waveguide modes so what are the limitations of rod removal as you can see if you completely remove the rod that is not going to be possible because in that case okay you will not be able to support a waveguide mode so you need to have a mode within the band gap to support propagation of light through it but if you make it further you now smaller it will actually go into this region okay so here you can see that the mode radius basically influences the waveguide modes proximity okay and it you keep on reducing and it is getting closer and closer to the light cone so when the rod radius is 0.1a okay the mode already approaches and eventually hugs the light cone okay at the top of the gap you see here okay indicating this is the critical limit for the mode confinement so what are the challenges in guidance and confinement so further reducing the rod radius below you know 0.1 a would cause the mode to lose its guided characteristics especially it will not be a waveguide mode anymore 
okay attempting to guide light primarily within the air gaps okay between the rods also fail due to you know there will be no uh, vertical confinement due to index guiding so both possibilities are not there and you will not be able to guide light through the gap between the uh, air gap between the rods and you cannot make the uh, rod size very small or completely get a missing row that will not work okay so to draw out the comparison further we will consider three different structures that share the same kind of periodicity in two dimension but they basically differ in the third or the vertical dimension so look at the figure here here you know um, all the structures are basically two dimension uh, at at you know z equals 0 cross section they look identical okay so this this structure is basically this one you are just considering one plane so that is why it's a part of 3d photonic crystal okay and this is a photonic crystal slab so these are basically uh, rods of finite height what is this this is basically a two dimensional uh, photonic crystal that means the rod would extend infinitely in the vertical dimension and that is why it is able to support a complete tm band gap now if you look into the second structure as i mentioned this is a three dimensional photonic crystal it has got a complete uh, band gap but as you can see the gap is slightly reduced as compared to this one okay and here what we are considering we are basically looking at you know one of the row of rod is basically missing from the single layer of this you know 3d photonic structure okay and the third one we have been discussing uh, a lot about this photon crystal slab this is basically a finite height uh, two dimensional periodic photonic crystal clear so what we understand here so all these band diagrams are plotted for um, a dielectric constant of epsilon equals 12 so that is the permittivity of the rod material in air and all of them have got one row missing so because of this row missing thing you are basically having a uh, in this case in the two dimensional case you are having this guided uh, band which is shown as the uh, red line okay and uh, the extended modes of the crystal are shaded in dark blue as also you can see here also you can see the same thing just that the band gap got narrowed and uh, this is the guided band okay and the yellow color shows you the band gap so things are not uh, as exciting for photon crystal slab with a missing row as we discussed previously so here uh, I'll come to this later that only one particular point shows you some hope in feasibility. So this is what has been displayed in this particular figure. So the project, these are the band diagram of these three particular cases, 2D photon crystal, 3D photon crystal and photon crystal slabs. Okay. And uh, this clearly shows you the difference in uh, mode propagation and confinement for the three cases. So, what about the air guided modes? The air guided mode in the first two structures that is this two dimensional and three dimensional photonic crystals are uh, positioned uh, almost entirely above the light line of the photonic crystal slab. So, this is the light line. Okay. So, the air guided modes are all on top of that in the case of you know 2D and 3D photonic crystal slab. So, this basically indicates different confinement and propagation characteristics uh, of this two crystal as compared to the slab structure. Okay? Yeah. So, one thing um, we possibly missed. So, it was basically that here you can see that there is a uh, red dot um, shown okay? and uh, this is basically um, showing a very weakly guided state right at the top of the band gap edge okay and uh, this is the only possible guided mode in this particular case because you have completely removed the 
uh, row of rods. Now we can discuss about the you know opposite structure that is like if you have a slab of uh, holes how removing holes will affect the pan gap okay so that is also possible that is also a type of defect okay so the defect in the photonic structure was created by altering the average dielectric constant um, along a specific line impacting the guided bands position within the band gap so what you can do you can either fill a complete row of holes with the same material so that can be also called as a row missing row of holes or you can change the size of the holes that will also bring you know changes or that will also be considered as defects so these are the methods of decreasing dielectric constants or say manipulating dielectric constant so when you say manipulating dielectric constant you can decrease the dielectric constant and that is possible and reducing the dielectric constant would push a guided band upward from the lower edge of the band gap. So, what happens in the other case if you increase the dielectric constant? So, opposite thing will happen. So, increasing the dielectric constant pulls down you know uh, the bands from the upper edge of the band gap and uh, these things will be shown here in this particular figure which shows the projected band diagram for a hole slab where a row of holes have been filled okay so that is basically uh, increasing the average dielectric constant right so what do you see this is uh, uh, the projected band diagram for t like uh, states so they are also called uh, z event states we discussed earlier Okay, for a W1 defect in the whole slab. So, what is this W1 defect? So, if uh, now it is a general form you can think of WN defect which will involve removal of N rows. So, here only one row is removed. So, you call this kind of defect as W1. Okay. So, how it happened? You basically um, you created a missing row. Um, along the x direction so this is x direction right so here you can see that the dark shaded regions indicate uh, the extended t like modes of the crystal okay and uh, you can also see that there is a guided mode okay are which are introduced in the so there are basically two guided modes which are introduced um, in the gap okay um, so they are shown as these red bands in this pink shaded region and uh, below all of the extended modes of the crystal hmm, so which are basically the green bands below the red shaded regions okay and the guided modes are classified as um, y even or you can say solid lines and y odd which are basically uh, the uh, dashed lines that you can see over here okay so these are the modes uh, possible okay and uh, y odd y odd and y even these are basically uh, decided based on y equals 0 mirror symmetry that also we have discussed briefly earlier this is a practical application of that kind of system of uh, holes missing so a fabricated example of this kind of waveguide is shown here so this is a suspended membrane means there is no substrate below it's air okay and um, this shows how you know theoretical concepts are applied in actual photonic device structures so what are the characteristics of the guided modes in this case so the the waveguide supports a series of guided modes that are confined horizontally by the band gap and they are confined vertically by index guiding due to difference in the refractive index between the guide waveguide material and surrounding air. The second category of uh, guided modes uh, are also there they arise due to waveguide having a higher 
average dielectric constant as compared to the um, surrounding air. So, here the guiding mechanism you can guess it is basically they are all index guided in all the directions and they lie below the extended modes of the crystal. So, what are the different mode types? So, all of the guided modes are T like and uh, fundamental in the z direction meaning they have no nodes along this axis. Okay? So, you can visualize this uh, by plotting the magnetic field component Hz okay, in the z equal 0 plane which will help to illustrate their spatial field distribution. Okay? So, figure 7 here displays this uh, Hz field cross section for the 5 guided modes okay? so which are also numbered over here. So, these modes are basically identified with these letters that you see here and their special characteristics are shown here and you can map them uh, with their position in the band diagram. So, what you see carefully uh, if we look then the left side is telling you about y odd on the top and you have y even at the bottom okay? and this is the y axis. Okay? This is the coordinate system that has been marked over here. Okay? So, these are the index guided modes at kx equals pi by a which have uh, lower frequencies than any extended mode of the crystal or air at that kx. So, and uh, because h is a pseudo vector, the even modes uh, look odd and vice versa. Okay? In the middle, you can see they correspond to c and d points. Okay? So, you have c here, you have d here. Okay? So, they all correspond to those things. So, they are both in the band gap. Okay? So, these points in the same y odd uh, gap guided bands and they are taken at um, kx equals for the top one it is 0 0.3 um, times 2 pi by a okay? and the bottom one is taken as kx equals pi by a and the drastic field uh, change that you can see corresponds to an anti crossing okay? and that is why you see this kind of difference. On the right, you basically correspond to E and F. So, you can see this one is E, this one is F. So, are, they are basically showing you the guided bands. Okay? So, these are two higher order Y even guided bands. Right? So, a pseudo vector also known as an axial vector would behave differently uh, under coordinate system transformations compared to a regular vector or a polar vector. So, under reflection pseudo vectors basically reverse directions um, which uh, contrast with the scalar fields or polar vectors that would retain their orientations under the same transformation. So, common examples of pseudo vectors would include like magnetic fields and angular momentum and that is why we have mentioned it here that because you know. Uh, H magnetic field is a pseudo vector, the even modes will look odd and vice versa okay? because we are talking about y equals 0 mirror symmetry. Okay? So, what are the implications in photonic crystals? In photonic crystals, um, especially those with uh, line defects or other forms of structural asymmetry, the behavior of the electromagnetic modes, both uh, electric and magnetic fields can be categorized based on their symmetric properties. The symmetric classifications are often uh, referred to as odd or even based on how the field patterns uh, reflect across the symmetry plane. So, you can consider y equals 0 plane. So, even modes. So, typically for scalar fields an even mode would mean that the field pattern is symmetric about the plane of reflection. So, you now if you flip it across the plane it will look the same. And odd modes would say that you know the field pattern is asymmetric. So, flipping it uh, across the plane would result in a field pattern that would look like is inverted version or negative version. 
so we we understood that you know magnetic field vector is basically uh, magnetic field is a pseudo vector and its uh, symmetric properties under reflection are basically counterintuitive so the even modes would appear odd upon reflection okay and upon reflection and even mode of the magnetic field across a symmetric plane okay we'll do this again so even modes would appear odd when reflecting an even mode of the magnetic field across a symmetry plane the direction of the magnetic field reverses because it's a pseudo vector and that is why it will make an even mode appear like as if it were odd and the even odd modes would appear even so conversely an uh, odd mode will appear to maintain symmetry under reflection similar to an even mode because the inversion inherent to the pseudo vector nature of magnetic field okay would counteract the expected inversion from the modes or symmetry so with that you can further look into this and understand that the system exhibits invariance under reflections in the y equals 0 uh, plane okay so it is a this kind of a plane okay across this okay so you can now you uh, know see that the modes uh, can be classified uh, with respect to odd or even based on the reflections so the fundamental mode that you see here a is basically y odd mode okay though it looks appears even okay and uh, y odd modes are uh, more uh, readily excited by plane wave input beam thus uh, they receive more focus in analysis so if you try to evaluate the field profile of y odd modes okay so the field profiles of the second y odd band which is located in the band gap okay uh, it will show so it is the b1 this okay so it will show notable changes as the wave vector varies from the light cone to the brilliant zone edge okay so as i mentioned the figure b so this one displays the field pattern at k equals 0.3 a k x equals 0.3 pi by a so you can understand where it will uh, stand okay so this axis is basically k um, k x a by 2 pi okay so you can actually calculate that so k x a so a will cancel it out by 2 pi so you are basically at 1.15 right so figure c here it shows the field pattern for k x equals 0 0.5 pi by a noting an additional pair of nodes in the y direction so what are the anti crossing effect so this significant change in the field pattern arises due to an anti crossing event where the two bands are expected to intersect instead couple and repel each other so that is the anti crossing effect so they would um, alter the trajectories unless a you know specific symmetry prevents this interaction so we'll understand this better so this we have already seen now here is a case where you can consider no interaction so that is the initial condition you consider non periodic waveguide okay so this is the schematic of anti crossing that occurs when periodicity is added so here it is no interaction because it's not periodic okay so you just consider the y odd bands for a non periodic waveguide and it looks like this so here the index guided mode is depicted in green okay is folded back at the artificially imposed edge of the brillouin zone here and the higher order y mode which is depicted in red okay in is located at a higher frequency and it is also similarly folded back 
Now, if you introduce this is a non periodic waveguide, okay. Now, if you introduce periodicity in that waveguide, that is so this figure on the right this basically shows that case when the periodicity is introduced in the slab. So, as soon as periodicity is there, band gap will emerge and the bands will start to repel each other, and this is what is shown here. So, what are the interaction points? So, this repulsion occurs not only at the edge of the brilliant zone, but also at points where the bands basically intersect. So, where the red and the green bands are intersecting. So, in terms of you know the wave vector k x, you will see evolution of the field patterns with k x, you can see a continuous transformation. So, x k x increases along the second band, okay the field pattern basically transitions. So, second band is this one. So, if you see the, the field pattern basically transitions from continuously from the red mode. So, you can also look here in the figure B okay, to the green mode which is basically um, figure C okay, of the field plot. So, that is where from the red mode to green mode it is uh, transitioning right. So, these are you know this behavior can be leveraged to produce unusual dispersion effect including the ultra flat quadratic uh, sorry quadric ultra flat quartic band edges and uh, zero dispersion inflection points. Now, what are this ultra flat um, quartic band edges? So, ultra flat would uh, refer to band edges where the curvature of the band that means the second derivative with respect to the wave vector k okay, would approach 0 over a relatively wide range of k and this would result in very uh, low group velocities for uh, photons or electrons. And then what is quartic band. So, the term uh, quartic implies the band edge follows a fourth degree polynomial dependence near the edge. So, quartic band edges are basically characterized by a dispersion relation that looks like this. So, E k can be written as E naught plus beta k minus k naught whole to the power 4. So, here E naught is basically the energy at the band edge k naught is the wave vector at the band edge and beta is a constant. Okay? So, you can see the you know um, fourth order polynomial dependence okay? and what is the significance? This kind of ultra flat bands are particularly interesting for enhancing light matter interaction because photons in these bands would uh, travel slowly. So, that would interact that would increase the interaction time with the medium. So, this can also enhance various types of nonlinear effects increasing the efficiency of light emission processes or it could improve the sensitivity of different sensors. The second one is zero dispersion inflection points. So, when you say zero dispersion inflection point that occurs where the dispersion curves second derivative with respect to k changes sign. So, it changes sign means from uh, concave it becomes convex or vice versa and the first derivative which represents group velocity becomes 0. So, this point marks a transition in the curvature of the Venn diagram. So, mathematically you can represent this as you know at the 0, deflection, zero dispersion inflection point dou square e by dou k square equals uh, 0 or you can say d square e by d k square equals 0 and d e by d k equals 0 as well at some point of or at some value of k. So, what is the significance or application? So, at such points the group velocity dispersion is 0. So, g v d is 0 and that means the spread of uh, web packet velocity is minimal. Okay? And this property is very important for applications like pulse propagation within optical fibers where you know minimal pulse broadening is basically desired. Now, we will look into the effects of substrates okay? and 
to into dispersion and discuss about losses. So, index contrast and reflection symmetry. Okay. So, if you remember that the original configuration of the photonic crystal slabs were assumed to be suspended in air because it maximizes the index contrast between the slab and the surrounding medium and it also preserves the z equal to 0 reflection symmetry. But that is not possible because you need to place a substrate below your thing and as soon as you place the substrate the symmetry breaks. Okay? So, you no longer have your um, z equal to 0 reflection symmetry. And uh, this asymmetry also causes TE like and TM like modes to couple. So, it disrupts any band gap which were actually exclusive to either of the modes. So, that way you know the waveguide modes which were previously confined by the gap when the slab was basically floating in air, those gaps becomes leaky when the slab will be placed on the substrate. So, that brings some application concerns something like the leakage rate. The issue of leakage is significant only if the rate at which the energy leaks from the modes is unacceptable for a particular application. So, eventually every mode will disappear, but then the rate at which it disappears or leaks out the energy loses that is also important. So, there are numerous experiments which have demonstrated that effective waveguides can still be fabricated on oxide substrate. So, that have relatively low permittivity which is close to 2. So, air will have permittivity of 1 and you have this material uh, like oxides, oxide based substrate where the permittivity can be kept as low as possible. So, what are the other mitigation strategies? So, itching patterns. So, reducing polarization mixing can uh, is possible by etching the periodic pattern into both the slab and the substrate and that can help you know maintain effective guidance of the modes. So, do not take a solid substrate rather try to drill holes at the places where you already have holes on your slab. So, that will try to you know uh, help guidance of the modes and despite a super subs, super straight material sorry and how do you restore uh, symmetry you can uh, deposit a super straight material that means you put a material on top of your slab that has got similar properties as your substrate and that will help you restore some degree of the lost z symmetry because now the top and the bottom of the slab will look identical okay and um, about the location of the guided modes. So, in symmetric photonic structures guided modes within the band gap typically lie near the edge of the Brillouin zone okay. and uh, what happens near the Brillouin zone you can see band flattening that means as the modes approach the you know here you can see as the modes approach the edge of the Brillouin zone the bands tend to flatten and uh, that means the group velocity of these modes approaches 0. Okay? And uh, what about group velocity dispersion that is basically calculated as d v g over d omega that indicates the rate at which the pulse will spread temporarily in the waveguide. And when you think of uh, this uh, region, okay? so the b what will be the behavior at zone edge? So, this dispersion parameter diverges at the edge of the brilliant zone and that would basically lead to significant pulse spreading. right? So, you can observe from the band diagrams that you know um, as shown in the figures the guided waveguide modes exhibit both uh, low group velocity and strong dispersion across most of the operational bandwidth. So, what are the utilization of this low group velocity? As we discussed that when you have low group velocity it is also known as slow light and they can be employed to enhance uh, optical nonlinearities, which are very important for certain applications. So, you can also enhance the light matter interaction in sensors or in other materials nonlinear materials using this concept. So, 
alternate design requirements would be you know you it is in some applications it is advantageous to have a uh, broad bandwidth with uh, low dispersion paired with uh, more typical with a more typical um, group velocity so this can be achieved by doing some modification to the webcam design some of these design strategies are you know surrounding a dielectric strip webcam with a photonic crystal slab will allow you to adjust the dispersion characteristics by you know avoiding terminations with surface teeths so integrating with uh, photonic crystal slabs okay it helps and what about the webcam characteristics so the resulting webcam modes in this particular structure will closely resemble uh that of an isolated strip yet it will effectively function as a conduit for reaching the point effects and other devices embedded within the photonic crystal so now let us focus on the losses so there are some inherent losses in real systems and uh, even though the webcam modes in a perfect and symmetric slab are basically theoretically lossless practical applications invariably will introduce some degree of loss in them and what are the sources of this losses the first one will be substrate okay so as you as discussed previously when you place a uh, slab on a substrate that breaks the symmetry and introduces you know coupling losses between different modes and when there is coupling between different modes the power or the energy gets shared okay there would be material absorption so inherent properties of the webcam material will lead to uh, absorption losses there would be radiative scattering coming from the irregularities from the fabrication process right so these irregularities will disrupt the translational symmetry of the slab what would be the effect of disorder coupling and reflections okay so disorder allows uh, webcam modes to couple to states with different web vector values and can cause reflections in the reverse direction webcam mode at minus k and uh, we can also find a scaling relation for losses so near vg equals 0 band edge okay there is a specific scaling relation where the loss per unit distance due to uh, disorder scattering into the reflected mode increases as 1 by vg square and uh, other um, loss modes would be something like you know they they will basically scale as 1 by vg okay so other when i say the other ones the other ones are basically the radiation uh, or the absorption okay so losses because of radiation and absorption will also increase but they will scale as 1 by vg so with that we conclude our discussion on the leiden defects in slabs now we'll briefly touch upon point defects in slabs okay so you can see here these are uh, localized mode trapping by point defects and uh, a point defect in a photonic crystal slab traps a localized mode similar to the corresponding mode in a infinite uh, two dimensional crystal and uh, due to the presence of the light cone in the slab these localized modes are inherently leaky resonances with uh, intrinsic vertical radiation loss okay and uh, you can think of creation of a monopole state in the rod slab so by simply removing a rod from this kind of a structure okay or in a two dimensional crystal or a three dimensional crystal is not very effective due to inadequate vertical confinement rather what you have to do you can either uh, reduce the radius of the dielectric constant sorry either you can reduce the radius or the dielectric constant of the rod and its nearest neighbors and that could create a desirable monopole state for instance you can think of you know reducing the dielectric constant from epsilon equals 12 to epsilon equals 9 uh, for a particular rod and uh, its four neighbors so here you can actually see the field pattern 
for this kind of a defect mode. So, this is that rod and these are the four neighbors for whom the dielectric constant is changed and this is the side view, this is the top view. Okay. So, they basically show you a TM like mode. So, this is Z and uh, Y and what we are plotting is basically EZ. Okay. And uh, this modified defect mode would exhibit a radiative lifetime with a quality factor of uh, QR that is around 13,000. In the next lecture, we will come into the discussion of how these uh, large quality factors can be obtained. Okay. So, here we will just show you the um, influence of substrate on the mode lifetime. So, if you try to recall something from lecture 20, observations from the quality factors of loss, lossy cavities, you, you would recall that the presence of substrate would significantly impact the lifetime of resonant modes in a particular slab. Okay? And the table 1 actually shows this kind of a comparison. So, suspended membrane in air, so they have like 13,000. If you have, you know, epsilon equals 2.25 kind of pillars, okay, you have, means you are still having those holes, okay. So, they you slightly it reduces, but if you have a solid substrate of the same material uh, that were used for making those, you know, pillars earlier. So, in that case, it significantly drops, right. So, reduced substrate losses are noted when the substrate shares the same cross section as the slab. So, you also need to drill those periodic holes in the uh, substrate or whatever is the, you know, if it is a rod structure, your substrate should also have the same kind of cross section. So, simply placing, you know, um, a solid substrate will not help. Placing a layer of substrate material on top of the slab will also help restore the Z symmetry and that would help prevent, you know, polarization mixing and would reduce in plane radiative losses to some extent. Okay. So, there are some trade off here. So, restoring jet symmetry um, increases the mean dielectric constant. Um, so, enhancing the local density of the radiative states, which can counteract the benefits of, uh, you know, reduced polarization mixing. So, what is important? So, no clear advantage to symmetrization. So, when you put something like the super state, it is actually the benefit is getting counterbalanced. So, the effect of increasing the mean dielectric constant and reducing polarization mixing nearly counteract each other. Okay? And that is why there is no compelling reason to put a super state and try to make you know, the system symmetric in this kind of scenario. So, you can actually avoid doing that because that does not bring anything uh, good on the table. So, with that, we will um, stop here. Thank you. And we will be going for um, detailed discussion of engineering high Q resonant cavities in the next lecture. If you have any query regarding this lecture, you can drop an email to this email address mentioning MOOC, Photonic Crystal and the lecture number on the subject line. Thank you. Mm -hmm.